Hey guys, and welcome to Petrolped, and welcome to my COVID-19 daily vlog, uploading a new video every day at 6 p.m. to keep you sane during lockdown. Guys, it is time for another Peddler's Rides, and I had a huge request for anything but minis. Now, it's no great surprise that I've had lots and lots of mini videos sent to me. After all, many of you are mini owners. That's probably why you follow my channel. So I have had a few requests. Can you do a video that doesn't have minis in it? So I thought I would share these two brilliant videos with you. First off, we're off to Rick the Spud. Now, Rick has a Honda Civic. It's a brilliant story about the car. It's a very good edit and make sure you watch till the end because he's even included some outtakes. Hi guys and welcome to Petrol Ped. Obviously I'm not Petrol Ped. Uh, my name's Rick or Rick the Spud and this is my 1996 Honda Civic VTI. This car comes with a 1.6 VTEC engine And from new at 158 horsepower, but that was 24 years ago. So I don't know how many of those horses have escaped. Another video that I want to do is get this on the rolling road to see what it's actually still making, because it still feels pretty good. I bought this car in 2011 from a uh, one lady owner. Uh, it was actually abandoned around the back of some garages. Uh, it had been sat there for about three or four years and I bought it as a farm car pretty much by the time I got it to the farm I realised actually I was going to keep it myself there was nothing wrong with it I used it around the farm for a week everything on it worked electric windows electric sunroof other than four sticky brake calipers where they'd semi seized on where it had been sat for so long stripped the calipers down had a new windscreen fitted because that was cracked took it for an MOT and it went straight through and then I've used it as my daily car ever since I work up at Goodwood Motor Circuit as well so it's had a few laps around the track there and maybe a couple of times on the skid pan as well it's also been to the Nürburgring it's been to Spa Cabwell Park um, and yeah nothing seems to phase it it was completely standard up until a few years ago where I realized I was actually gonna probably hang on to it for a bit longer um, and then started doing a few bits I haven't done loads to it the engine is still completely standard I've put some Recaro seats in it out of a Integra DC2 which completely transformed it as well. The standard seats just didn't have enough bolster on and for track days you're falling out of the seats. And uh, they also sit slightly lower as well so when I'm wearing a helmet my uh, head's not touching the roof. I also fitted these Team Dynamics wheels with Michelin Pilot Sport tyres and uh, lowered it on BC Racing coilovers. That all sounds probably very familiar to petrol ped viewers because that's exactly the same as what he's got on his mini convertible but I guarantee you I did this first, but he definitely didn't copy me. <laughs> I know the people on your channel are a big fan of dogs. So this is my little Rocky. We got him as a rescue dog last year. He's a bit of a Heinz 57 varieties and all he wants to do at the moment is play ball. Isn't that right, mate? I fitted these facelift rear lights. They came on the 98 cars, which haven't got the orange indicator in them. They got the clear indicator, just made them look a little bit more modern. Also fitted these clear side repeaters there's actually an aftermarket part, they didn't come on these cars at all, so I just found these on eBay for cheap. Yeah, don't look too closely in there, there may have been a bit of uh, welding that's happened in there, because uh, if there's no rust on it, it's not a real Honda. I got this lower lip spoiler from EP Racing, which kind of makes it look a bit more aggressive. Also fitted these import style number plates, not because it's an import, but because JDM. Once I fitted these Recaros, because they sat a little bit lower in the car, I found that I had my sun visors down all the time. So I had my friend Dan fit this sun strip for me, just to keep the sun out of my eyes. Also gives it a little bit more of a race car sort of look. As you can see inside the car, everything's pretty much standard, other than these Integra DC2 seats. I hunted around for quite a long time to try and find some black ones, because I wanted to kind of keep that OEM Plus look. Didn't want the bright red ones that they normally come with. Oh, and aftermarket stereo, because it did come with a tape deck. And also, Mega Mount mobile phone holder. If you haven't got a Mega Mount mobile phone holder, definitely go and buy one. Available from Control and Shift, a little plug there. Yeah, I think for 
24 years old she looks pretty good I'll try and stand about four or five feet away when I'm doing any pictures or filming because up close it is actually quite scratched and swirly and rusty and dented yeah from here looks pretty good I know all you petrol ped viewers are into watching brand new minis not old rusty Hondas but still appreciate your support so yeah that's it from me so hopefully see you on the next one and uh, keep it sideways no uh, stay safe no drive safe and uh, stay at home that's that's an aftermarket part they didn't make clear side repeat side repeaters you couldn't actually uh, these clear side repeaters they didn't you oh man got these Integra DC2 seats which I paid more <laughs> Civic you could get in the UK when it came I'll wait till you've gone you're ruining the shot Come here. I just love that I love that story the fact that the car was bought just because it was a shed and it was going to be driven around the farm and then it kind of grew on you and you ended up making it look nice and put new seats in it you track day it and you've stuck it on coilovers brilliant brilliant story make sure you follow rick the spuddy put all his links in the film but i will put them below as well next off we're off to Straya. Now, one of the things that has amazed me about this whole process is I am getting videos from all over the place. Clearly lots from the UK, plenty from the US, Australia, Panama, South Africa. They're all coming soon. I promise they will all hit the channel. But I wanted to go over to Australia to a guy called Mark Kaur. Now, Mark has, well, an MGTF. And I wanted to show this video because there's been some brilliant editing. Rick the Spud's video was edited brilliantly. Mark sent me lots of individual video clips and I then sewed them together in the edit. And I wanted to show you this just so that you don't think you need to be an expert at Final Cut Pro to be able to send me a video. You really don't. So let's head off down under. Over to you, Mark. Hi, this is my uh, 2003 MGTF 160, which uh, I purchased in uh, Sydney, New South Wales, uh, a couple of years ago and shipped it to South Australia, as uh, these cars are rather hard to find in South Australia and there are a lot more in Sydney, Melbourne and possibly Brisbane than there are in Adelaide. So uh, uh, so I shipped it over as uh, at the time I, uh, I didn't really have the time to drive it back and I was a bit worried about whether it would make the trip, but uh, I've taken it on a few long trips since and it's been... Uh, very very good very reliable um, I had to do a little bit of uh, tidying up to the exterior uh, a couple of little dents and a broken bumper to fix and a small bit of rust and I had to most importantly replace the hood which was very poor and now has a newer type one with the glass window being a 160 this has got the larger brakes the four pot APC racing calipers and uh, I've replaced the disc and also fitted some Brembo pads and it stops very well. Uh, a modification I'll probably do later is to put the big brake kit on the back as the rear brakes are somewhat weedy in comparison to the front ones, but the car does stop very well. The TF is definitely not the most roomy of cars, but even though I'm over six foot I still find it fairly comfortable, although there's not much you can really cram into them. Uh, the boot is reasonable, um, 210 litres and if you really want to you can probably put a little bit in the front if you take out the spare tyre but uh, otherwise yeah they're quite comfortable um, definitely a big improvement with the new hood which has a glass type of uh, rear window far better than the old plastic one and also I got the, uh, the heated rear window working which was quite handy although the air conditioner does quite a good job of demisting if you, if you really need it the TF has a reasonable little boot of around 210 litres which I find quite fine for most little shopping trips and things although nowhere near as big as the Saab hatchbacks I used to drive in the past the engine is a uh, variable valve and cam timing version of the uh, 1.8 litre K series Rover which has a very bad reputation for blowing head gaskets although the later versions seem to be a bit more reliable and the newer head gaskets are a lot better two important things you need to do with them is to keep an eye on the on the level in the expansion tank and always make sure that's correct. There is a 
a little kit you can get to warn you with the level drops and almost as importantly I think is to keep an eye on the old temperature gauge when you first start driving the car don't rev it too hard until you've got a little bit of temperature into the into the machine and then you can drive it uh, quite normally last year I took the seats out and sent them away for a retrim and replaced the somewhat daggy grey Alcantara with uh, a much brighter blue well, at least I think so uh, the blue is actually very similar to what MG fitted in 2004 models so I didn't want it to be too non-standard I also added some leather to the door cards and uh, they're still a work in progress but they do look a lot nicer than the original grey which tended to look rather daggy whilst the seats were out I took out the carpet and uh, added some Dynamat type sound deadening under that and fitted a new stereo and new speakers so it now has a Kenwood DAB stereo and a Pioneer amp behind it with some Infinity reference uh, component speakers in the doors and some JBLs on what MG calls a T-bar behind the headrest another mod I did recently is to uh, add these leather covers with blue stitching to the headrest which I think would look rather nice and added some alloy pieces including these seat belt tidies which keep the seat belts a little bit out of out of the way and I've also added some alloy pieces like the handbrake cover handbrake lever cover and uh, some alloy around the, the gauges. There will be some more alloy pieces in the dash when I soon repair this broken binnacle which is a common problem with MGTFs and probably Fs as well. If you happen to own a uh, TF or an F this is a good little book with lots of improvements and modifications you can do to the cars. Unfortunately uh, MG Rover kind of used a few lower grade components in a few spots and there's plenty of improvements nowadays that you can do to make the cars uh, a little bit better and maybe a little bit more up to date in some areas. One improvement I need to do probably during the lockdown is to fit some daytime running lights inside the headlights which uh, hopefully will make it a bit more visible to SUVs and things that uh, tend not to notice low down sports cars and generally make the whole thing a bit safer but overall I've been very happy with the car for the last couple of years that I've owned it. It's good fun to drive and, and in many, many areas it's not too hard to work on although I wouldn't like to work uh, in the engine compartment too much. It's rather cramped in there but uh, yeah it's a great fun car and it's also somewhat unique where I live so it's it's something I, I really enjoy. I really enjoyed that. I've got a real soft spot for an MGTF. I can remember driving one on a track experience day. I think it was at Thrux and I ended up driving a Ferrari 355 at the end of the day, but we started off in MGFs and they were great fun. But it's great to see you've got one all the way down there in Australia and it's your pride and joy. And I think we all enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed those two films, guys. Again, I'm going to try and bring you lots and lots of different stuff. So make sure you tune into the next Peddler's Rides to see what I'm going to surprise you with. But I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. Please, if you've got a car that you haven't filmed and you want to spend some time to keep you, you know, keep your spirits up and give you something to do during lockdown, feel free. There is no deadline as yet. I've got plenty of videos to keep us going, but I'm never going to say uh, don't send me anymore. Just get them sent in and I'll see what I can do with them. But anyway, I'm going to sign off there, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one, but you take care of yourself. Stay safe.